ice on Lake Simcoe gets more fragile, of course, which means at this time of year it's easy to go through the ice and dangerous for rescue and salvage crews. Casey Colby was on the lake last night on a recovery mission. Every year, thousands of anglers drive their vehicles onto the frozen waters of Lake Simcoe, and every year, vehicles fall through the unpredictable ice. That's when insurance companies call on Larry Bartlett and his team. Today, they're about 10 kilometers off the shore of Lake Simcoe, trying to recover a truck that was swallowed up by the lake recently when a pressure crack opened up. The driver wasn't hurt. But Bartlett says recovering vehicles underwater is a dangerous job. You're working on thin ice, you're working near a pressure crack. We do everything we possibly can to make it as safe as possible. Divers not only have to contend with crushing underwater atmospheric pressure, they're also challenged by powerful shifting underwater currents, all while working with very little light, says diver Paul Colomb. We've got uh, 95 feet of water uh, directly below me. And uh, we went down looking for a Ford Expedition. Down at the bottom, it's, uh, it's pretty muddy. If you touch down, it just clouds up. Head to the one with the line attached to it. All right, thank you. Take a quick look at the bag and then make your way back up. The law dictates that every detail is recorded for safety and insurance purposes. You lose your bike in the lake and it'll probably cost you a couple hundred dollars to replace it. You leave your vehicle in the lake, and not only is it against the law, but the government could fine you up to $10,000 a day if you don't try and get it out. We've located the truck and put some airbags on it to, uh, to float it. We're just going to put air to it. Once the vehicle is close to the surface, a large hole is cut in the ice to bring the vehicle out from the water. The cost of recovering the vehicle is substantial. We've done jobs anywhere from $10,000 to $50,000. Approximately 15 hours after they started their day, the recovery team brings the truck to the surface. The vehicle is a write-off. We'll take it back to our compound. It'll probably go to a salvage yard to be parted out. There'll be very little left. The good news is because this truck is now out of the water, the negative impact its toxic chemicals will have on the environment will be minimal. The bad news is the crew has just learned of six more vehicles under the water in this area. On the shores of Lake Simcoe, I'm Casey Colby, A News.